Hi everyone, uh, I'm here to tell you about how I cured my arthritis. I didn't slow it down or stop it, I completely reversed it. Modern medicine would consider this impossible. The best it can do is slow down the disease progression or cover up the symptoms. There is no cure. I cured my arthritis by identifying a science-based personalized diet that worked for me and that I strictly followed. Arthritis is a devastating disease that affects our quality of life. Unfortunately for me, my symptoms started in my 20s. By my late 30s, I was not able to enjoy hiking or sports or even washing dishes or many other daily tasks. Just carrying groceries from the store to the car would inflame my hands and my lower arms, so I had to ice them and take anti-inflammatory medications. My health was in worse shape than many 80-year-olds, and I was really frightened for my life. At this time, a dieting revolution was taking place. Thousands of blogs, books, websites were all making health claims about their diet. And these gave me hope, so I tried several. <laughs> Dairy-free, gluten-free, vegetarian, several others. Some of them worked for a few days and gave me hope, and then my symptoms returned, and it was very frustrating to go through this. My dietary experimentation ended with a diet that is ultra low in, in carbohydrates. This is known as the ketogenic diet. And uh, this diet not only didn't help me, but it actually made me lose my memory, which took two to three years to recover. I was terrified at that time, because how can a diet that's so popular and, and has so many vocal proponents can harm me in such a profound way? During this time, I read a lot of scientific literature trying to figure out what the, the connections between uh, personalized diets and health. And one common thread that I ran into very often was the gut microbiome. At that time, not much was known, um, and so I sort of let it be. Based on my symptoms, I suspected that I had an autoimmune disease that manifested itself as a low-grade inflammation. An autoimmune disease is an immune disease disorder where the immune system attacks its own body and causes damage. In late 2014, I read a single study that changed my life. It was published by Dr. Ajit Varki from the University of California at San Diego. And the team had identified a carbohydrate called NU5GC. This carbohydrate is produced by most mammals, but not humans. And they showed in their study that humans who consume mammalian food products would develop, could develop low-grade inflammation. <coughs> wow, I thought this could be it. The mechanism made sense to me. We consume mammalian products, and we actually can absorb this new 5 gc and incorporate it on the surface of our own cells. Since we don't make that molecule, our immune system can recognize it as foreign and mount an immune response that causes body-wide inflammation. Based on this study, I stopped eating all mammalian food products. That includes dairy and all red meats. I call this the mammal free diet. It's not very well known yet, but I think it's going to become very popular <laughs> because it's science-based. And uh, a month later, my symptoms had subsided to the point where I was really excited and I thought, this must be it because no other diet had done this for me. Within a year, my arthritis was completely gone and all my body damage that, that occurred during the previous two decades was repaired, especially my joints. This was obviously life-changing. I was hyper-excited about this, and I was able to go hike and go play sports and plan, plan future adventures with my family. Even small things at that time, like being able to wash dishes, were a gift, especially for my wife, of course. <laughs> so I was hyper-excited about this. I was healthy again. I could do things without having to worry about all the logistics around it. But I didn't want to stop there. I was a scientist, and I wanted to use my passion and scientific knowledge 
to help others find their personalized diet. So while I was solving my own health issues, I was reading a massive amount of scientific literature trying to connect all the dots. And some of the conclusions I made were that personalized diets can and will be used to prevent and treat chronic diseases. If there was one diet that helped everyone, wouldn't it have been found by now? The second is that the gut microbiome plays a central role in our health, and it's connected with personalizing the diets. And the third is that we needed much more highly accurate and highly complex scientific data that didn't exist at that time. At that time, I was a team leader of the advanced genomics team at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. My team spent years trying to lower the cost of a technology that is very powerful, and it's called metatranscriptomics. This technology provides an unprecedented insight into our gut microbiome. In 2016, I left my government job and I co-founded Viome, who is on a mission to prevent chronic diseases using science-based personalized diets. At Viome, we use this metatranscriptomic test to analyze stool samples and provide people with personalized diet and supplement recommendations. So as I've experienced, the, the contradictory dietary advice can be very frustrating and it's very common. One day you read that the Mediterranean diet is the best for you. They say all these Greek people live to be 100 years old because they ate Mediterranean diet. Then the next day a study says, no, 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 that's bad for you. You should go on ketogenic diet, which is completely the opposite of Mediterranean diet. One day you, you hear in the news, coffee is good for you. And you're like, wow, this is great. I'm going to go drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> A month later, there's another study that says coffee is bad for you. And you're like, man, I've just been drinking lots of coffee. Am I getting sick now? So this gets really, really ridiculous after a while. Enter the gut microbiome, the key to diet personalization. So what is gut microbiome? It is trillions of microorganisms that live inside our intestines. Trillions. And this gut microbiome is, plays a central role in our mental and physical health. So many scientists have called the gut microbiome an organ, a new organ. Just like your liver cleanses your body and your kidneys remove bad chemicals from your blood, the gut microbiome plays many important functions. It helps digest your food. It fights off pathogens. It regulates our immune system. And very importantly, the gut microbes produce thousands of chemicals inside our intestines that are, that are then affecting our physiology. The cool thing about this new organ versus the liver or the kidney is that the diet plays a big role in the function of this organ. It's not our DNA. And so with that in mind, we might be able to control it and then indirectly take control of our own health using personalized diets. For more than a decade, the gut microbiome has been studied by many companies and researchers. And everyone's been looking for this ideal healthy gut, one gut to rule them all. <laughs> However, it has not been found. And the reason is because they've been looking through the wrong lens. They're focused on the composition of the gut microbiome. That means which microorganisms are present in your intestines and in what proportions. We have done studies on many hundreds of healthy people, and they can have gut microbiomes that are more than 96% completely different. They have no overlap. And so the composition clearly doesn't play a role in someone's health. So humans, like most animals, have evolved to depend on this gut microbiome to provide us with thousands of chemicals for our own physiology. So for example, the microbes in your gut produce your B vitamins. They produce your vitamin K. They produce a lot of serotonin. They also produce short chain fatty acids. That's a bit of a technical term, but these are very important molecules. Imagine that gut microbes also help our own mitochondria, the engines of our own cells, acquire iron from the food we eat. We didn't know that until just a few months ago. So they play a very important role in our physiology, 
they can also produce harmful chemicals. And so it's really this balance of the chemicals that they produce, if it's mostly beneficial and just a few harmful, you're going to be healthy. But if the balance shifts differently, then you may get sick. The nice thing is that we can control the gut microbiome using personalized diets. Both the composition and the function are affected by what we eat. And so we really want to harness these, the, all, these scientific, all the scientific knowledge to understand how we can personalize someone's diet so that their gut microbiome produces just beneficial and not harmful chemicals. OK, so how do we actually personalize diets, you may ask. I'll give you a couple of examples. So let's say our gut microbiome test shows that your gut microbes are not producing enough vitamin K for you. Not a problem. There are foods such as spinach, kale, and arugula that contain vitamin K. So our baseline recommendation engine would say, OK, this person should be eating moderate amounts of kale, spinach, and arugula. But the story may get more complicated. Oxalates are chemicals in spinach that are used as food for certain microbes called oxalobacteria in your gut. If you have those bacteria, they'll consume oxalates, and that's great. If you don't have those bacteria, oxalates will cross into your bloodstream, go into the kidneys, and can cause kidney stones, which no one wants. So if our test says, whoops, you don't have any oxalobacteria, the recommendation engine will automatically move spinach to the avoid foods list, and it'll increase the portions of kale and arugula. And that's your personalized diet just based on that little tiny piece of information. Let's go with another example. So microbes in our gut produce two classes of chemicals that have the most influence over inflammation. You've all heard about inflammation. If you go see a doctor, no one really knows what causes it. Well, it turns out it's the gut microbiome that regulates our immune system. 90% of our immune system is inside our gut, not throughout our body. It's learning from the gut microbiome and the food we eat. And so these gut microbes produce a class of chemicals called lipopolysaccharides. These are pro-inflammatory chemicals, which means that they signal our immune system to become hyperactive, and it starts to destroy our own body unnecessarily mostly. There's another class of chemicals called short-chain fatty acids, like butyrate, and these are anti-inflammatory. They calm our immune system down and tell it there's nothing going on here, calm down. So it's the balance of these two chemicals that tells our immune system whether to be hyperactive or to calm down, and that regulates our inflammation. And the diet that we're eating influences the production of these two classes of chemicals. So if you, can now, if you can now tell someone what to eat and what not to eat, you can increase the production of these calming chemicals and decrease the production of these inflammatory chemicals and prevent inflammation, which causes most of these chronic diseases. So this is really, really great news. What we have discovered is that most people have a gut microbiome that can be healthy. All you have to do is find the right diet for your gut microbiome and it'll produce the chemicals you depend on and not produce any harmful chemicals. That's wonderful. So I think the, the, day, uh, the days of one diet fits all are over. Science-based personalized diets are here. They're helping people prevent and treat chronic diseases. So get your gut microbiome tested to find out what foods you should eat and which ones you should avoid. <laughs>